This talk is an overview of mood stabilizer medications. Among the psychotropics, mood stabilizers are some of the more difficult to use due to their narrow therapeutic indexes and potentially dangerous side effects. Therefore, I'll teach you about them with mnemonics outlining their side effects, which will hopefully serve as anchors for future learning. Some of the more common mood stabilizers used in clinical practice are lithium, lamotrigine, valproate, and carbamazepine, so I'll focus on them. Lithium side effects include Epstein anomaly, a potential teratogenic cardiac abnormality, diabetes insipidus, and renal toxicity overall, hypothyroidism, and hypercalcemia as a result of hyperparathyroidism. As such, regular monitoring of renal function, thyroid function, and calcium levels is important. Lithium, like most mood stabilizers, has a narrow therapeutic index of 0.8 to 1.2, and toxic levels can lead to dangerous GI, cardiovascular, and CNS symptoms. Use of lithium is relatively contraindicated in patients with renal disease, cardiovascular disease, or alongside use of NSAIDs and ACE inhibitors, which interact with lithium and can cause wide fluctuations in lithium levels. To anchor your knowledge of lithium, remember that, among the mood stabilizers, it uniquely impacts the kidneys. Lamotrigine side effects include a rash, which rhymes with lash, and the risk of life-threatening Stevens-Johnson syndrome, arrhythmias, CNS side effects including headache, brain fog, and diplopia, and EO synophilia referring to the risk of DRESS syndrome. Lamotrigine has a wider therapeutic index than the other mood stabilizers, toxicity is rare, and it does not require regular monitoring, so it's a good choice for long-term mood stabilization. However, it does require a slow titration to monitor for development of rash, so it's not ideal for emergency situations where rapid mood stabilization is required. The main contraindication is a prior rash associated with Lamotrigine use. Given the importance of monitoring for rash, I recommend anchoring your knowledge of lamotrigine with this aspect. Valproate side effects include the teratogenic potential for neural tube defects, which you can remember by vagus indicating the nerves and vagina indicating pregnancy, agranulocytosis, liver toxicity as well as pancreatitis, and hair loss, which you can remember by pate meaning a bald head. Similar to lithium, valproate has a narrow therapeutic index of 80 to 120 with potential for toxicity involving the organ systems listed here and necessary monitoring with LFTs and CBCs. It is relatively contraindicated in liver disease, mitochondrial disease, and pregnancy. To anchor your knowledge of valproate, I recommend remembering its impact on the liver. Finally, carbamazepine side effects include being a strong CYP inducer, agranulocytosis and coagulation defects, risk of rash and SJS, and teratogenic potential for spinal, facial, and cardiovascular abnormalities, which you can remember by baby. Carbamazepine has a narrow therapeutic index of 8 to 12, with the added complication that it is auto-inducing, which means that it reduces its own serum level by inducing CYP enzymes. Therefore, it often requires dose increases and frequent monitoring of levels early on. It has the potential for toxicity involving the organ systems listed here, and requires monitoring with LFTs, CBCs, and BMPs for sodium. It is relatively contraindicated in cases of bone marrow failure, use with other medications affected by its CYP induction, and pregnancy. To anchor your knowledge, I recommend remembering its impact on hematologic function. There are other side effects of the mood stabilizers that aren't unique, so I don't include them in the mnemonics. However, you should know that lithium and valproate are associated with weight gain and tremor. There's one last thing I'd like to point out that should help you memorize the therapeutic levels for these medications. As highlighted here, note that for lithium, valproate, and carbamazepine, the therapeutic levels are all between 8 and 12, just at different orders of magnitude. That's the end of this talk. The mood stabilizers can be tricky to use, with lots of small details to remember to avoid potentially dangerous outcomes. I hope that this framework helps to scaffold your knowledge, making it easier to remember the big picture concepts. Thank you.